So in this video, we're setting up the Alleger Nano S. I own both the S and the X. Not much difference between the two. The X has bigger storage and it also has a Bluetooth connectivity. But for the money, the S that you see on screen is the better option as essentially you just need this hardware device because it has these buttons, which means you can't send unless you can physically press these keys. So both of these models are good. However, the S is slightly cheaper. So if you wanna save some money, I would go with the S, which is what we're gonna set up in this video. But the setup for the X is pretty much identical. Once you get to grips with setting these up and using them, they do become second nature. Don't let the fact it's a hardware device put you off at all. You need to get one of these and start using one. So all I've done is just plug this in via the USB provided. And you're gonna to want to also download Ledger Live, which is this application here. You're gonna press download, and then you're going to have the Ledger Live application pop up for you. Now on the device here, it says, welcome to the Ledger Nano S. And if you press to the right, you move to the right. If you press to the left, you move to the left, pretty simple. And then if you press both buttons at the same time, it validates, so it's like pressing enter. Also, if you want to increase in number, you press to the right. If you want to decrease in number, you press to the left. So having two keys, it's very simple to use. So get started at ledger.com forward slash start. So essentially that is for downloading the Ledger Live application. And it's gonna ask us, do we wanna set up a new device or restore from a recovery phrase? We're setting up a new device. So we're gonna press both buttons here. And what you have to do first and foremost is set a pin code. This is a pin code for entering this device. If at any point you enter the wrong pin code three times in a row, the device resets itself. That is a safety feature, just in case someone steals it from you. So make sure you use a memorable pin, and you also want it to be fairly complex. So I'm gonna press both buttons at the same time here, and then enter in a pin code. It can be from, I think, four numbers all the way up to eight. I'm just gonna set a really, really simple one just for this tutorial. Um, but if you're going to set your own pin, I would just do something a lot more challenging than something basic. And then you can see the tick marks come up as four was the minimum number of numbers for a pin code. I then press both of them together and that enters. Confirm the pin code then, press enter once more by the double click, two, 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 and two. Enter again. So write down your recovery phrase. So at this point, like we've seen with other devices and other software solutions, you get recovery phrases for backing up your device. This gives you access to the private key so you can get back into the, de the device if, for example, you were to lose it. So you need to be very careful with these phrases, store them in a very secure place. Ideally, you would want to maybe laminate the piece of paper that you write these down on so it becomes water resistant and maybe keep it even in a fireproof safe. So we're gonna write these phrases down. There will be 24 in total. If you press to the right, it's gonna tell you the word number and the corresponding word. So on a notepad, you're gonna write down one through 24. In the boxes, they do provide recovery phrase sheets to write these words down on. You can use that. I'm gonna use a piece of paper because I'm going to be making multiple copies and keeping them in separate areas. So maybe if you've got a relative's home, you want to keep a secure one in, or maybe a bank vault, that kind of thing. You just want to protect yourself as far as possible as you're using a ledger device because you're gonna put a large quantity of cryptocurrency on here. So I'm gonna copy these down just off screen right now, all 24 words neatly in a notepad. So I've now written all of my words down, the 24th word being attitude. If we just skip to the right, it says confirm your recovery phrase, double click. Confirm word number one. It's gonna take us through the whole process. You need to go and find the first word on your list and then press the double click to confirm. So I'm gonna to start to do that process. Yellow. And the 24th word here is attitude, so confirm that last one. So it's now processing the fact you've entered those 24 words 
and it says your device is now ready. So we're gonna enter the dashboard and we want to start installing apps. The apps are the wallets for the various coins or tokens you're gonna to store. So for example, we need to install the Bitcoin app and the Ethereum app, as those are mainly the types of cryptos I'm gonna be storing on here. It then says open the ledger live to install the apps. So having downloaded this now, go ahead and open it up. When you open it up, it might ask you to add a pin code. You can skip past that, but I would add a pin code at some stage just for additional security. So we want to allow Ledger Manager by pressing the two buttons. And here on screen, we're gonna install Bitcoin and Ethereum. We're just gonna click the install button up here. And then I'm gonna press the same for Ethereum. And that one's now queued. And as you can see up here, this is our device. As we install the apps, the capacity will start to fill up a bit. But these are the two main blockchains that I want to have installed on this device. There is a whole list of other cryptos on here on different blockchains that you can add at your leisure. So now that these applications are on our device, we can actually start to move funds over here. We can also rename these accounts as well. On my ledger live, this application here, I do have another device already synced up. So there's multiple accounts. What I'm gonna do now is actually send some Bitcoin to this Ledger Nano S. So we're gonna click receive. So over on the right hand side, when we've got these applications on our manager, we're gonna click on add account. And we're gonna add a Bitcoin account first, double click. We've now got the option to edit the name. And because I've already got other ledgers assigned to my ledger live it's going to get very confusing for me so i need to rename this and i'm going to call it s for ledger nano s and i'm going to say this is test btc and then add that account label them as you wish it will be a lot simpler if this is your first device so this has now been added successfully to my portfolio. I'll press done. Now we can see this down at the bottom. So if I click on that, and now I can start to receive crypto to that address by pressing receive, continue. Now both on the ledger live, the application in front of us, and also on the physical device, it shows the BTC address that we need to send to. On the screen, BC1 and then ends in AM7. On the device, BC1, and if we just press to the right a bit, CAM7. So it is the correct Bitcoin address. So we now need to copy this address and also verify on here by pressing approve, which was going to the right and then double click. The address has now been shared securely. So I'm now going to send funds from the Exodus wallet. You're going to probably see this in the next video. This is a software wallet. Gonna press the word send and then paste that Bitcoin address over. BC1 ends in CAM7. And I'm going to send all of the funds I've got on here over and then tap in my password and then confirm that I want to send that Bitcoin over on Ledger Live. We can now press done on the application. We can just toggle across to quit. And from here, if, for example, you want to add some Ethereum, you'd go to add Ethereum up here. Press continue. Open the Ethereum app on here with the double press. Again, edit the account name. So I'm gonna call this S test ETH. And then add that account. Successfully added, I can press done. Then receive. Scroll down to my S test ETH I just named and press continue.
And this time round, it's going to give me the Ethereum address and I need to verify that on the device. So if I press right, OX4, that tallies with up here, OX4 ends in 37D. If I press right, ends in 37D. So again, I can approve that and then I can receive Ethereum to that address. I would have needed to have copied that, of course. But that's as easy and simple as it is to take your addresses so you can deposit funds onto these devices. If we click into our S-Test BTC, we can now see we've started to receive some funds. So that Bitcoin has now gone into this account. I've got my privacy mode turned on, but I can just toggle that off for you. And you can see that $107 of Bitcoin has now been received to this hardware device. So that's pretty easy and simple to do. You need to just practice a few times, maybe with small amounts of crypto, putting it in, taking it off, moving it about, and you'll feel really confident in using these. And there's no reason to be shy of using one of these as this is the best long-term storage device on the market. If we wanna send it away, so we want to withdraw, go to our account, and then we would enter the Bitcoin receiving address. So we can do that from Exodus as well. We can press receive here, copy that address, go back into Ledger Live, Control and V, and then press continue. We can then send our crypto back to that Exodus wallet. If we wanna send the max back, click on that. You can edit the network fees. You can pay higher fees if you want to speed up the transaction, but I'm happy just to do this. It's gonna cost me $7 just to show you guys. Press continue and then continue again to confirm a transaction from here into this new account, BC1ZWZ, BC1ZWZ, so it all tallies. Press continue. On the device, I need to go and quit because I was in the ETH wallet. It's now gonna ask me to go into the Bitcoin application. So run application for Bitcoin, double press, and there you go, it's now ready. You can then review the output, see the amount, see the address it's going to, BC1 ends in ZWZ. Then you can either accept by double pressing that, or you can reject. I'm gonna reject this. I don't particularly want to just do a $7 transaction for no reason. So there we go, we're gonna reject that. But that is how you would actually go ahead and then withdraw from the Ledger device. As you can see on screen here, it has been denied. So this goes to show you need to have the device physically in your hands to approve and deny transactions. Even if someone gets control of your PC remotely, without having the physical device, they can't steal your crypto from these ledgers. That's what makes them additionally secure and the reason why you want to hold one.